I picked up this tile a while back uh, from this company called the Motawi Tile Works, I guess how you pronounce it. I'll put a link to their website down in the comment in the notes for this uh, video. I really liked it. To me, it's got an arts and a craft, arts and craft uh, feel to it with the chickadees and the flower. Uh, it needs to have a frame, though, and, and, and something to put it in. I, I use these tiles on my mission-style mantle clocks, or arts and craft mantle clocks that I made. And I got another video out there on that. So I, I really like their product. They're really, uh, they're really nice. So what I thought I'd do is make a frame for this so I can proudly display it now that I have it. Uh, I wanted an arts and crafts style frame, so what I did was I went back to my Craftsman archives, which is the Archives for Craftsman magazine, which was published by Gustav Stickley back in the early 1900s. He didn't really, I searched through the archives, and he really didn't have a frame, but generally arts and crafts stuff fairly simple. So what I did find was this hall mirror. And it really is what I'm looking for. It's just uh, four pieces with through tenons. Uh, and he says on this one, he's got a slight curve on the top piece uh, just to give it a little bit of interest. Um, the joints are actually pegged, which it doesn't show in the front, but he's got a little peg in there on each one of them. So I'm going to just adapt this design to that tile. Uh, so what I did was I drew out a, a sample here, and hopefully you can see it on the on the video it's just the four pieces with some through tenons and this top piece has a slight curve on it the sides and, and the bottom are an inch thick or an inch wide uh, this one is an inch and an eighth in the center and it'll be an inch here i'm going to peg the joints uh, like he did on his uh, this is a quarter inch peg which i think is probably too big uh, this is an eighth of an inch which might be fine. I don't know. I'm still debating on that one yet. This bottom one down here is a 3 16th. So I, I don't know. But I'll decide. Uh, probably not this one. It'll either be that one or that one that when we peg it. I thought I would make it out of, normally it would be made out of some uh, quarter sawn oak. But I got some leftover cherry from a buffet project that I did. And so I cut some pieces out of it. Now this is the flat sawn side, which I thought was just a little busy for a small project like this. So what I did was if I turn it, and I get it the right way here, if I turn it like this on the side, I get basically the side grain, which is pretty straight grain. Um, so let me find this one. So I've, I've cut these pieces and I've marked them. Uh, these are the top and the bottom, and these are the two sides. It's going to have to be kind of a custom fit because the tile is not really, a, it's six by six, but it's not actually six by six. So it's, we'll have to custom make that as we're doing it. Uh, thickness wise, obviously that's too thick and I could wrap it out the front and inset it, but I'd rather put it back on the, back on the piece. So if I take this quarter inch piece of Baltic birch plywood and I put that on there. It's almost where I want it to be. It's the frame is still a little proud, and the pieces are one inch thick this way. So I think if I take them down to seven eighths, uh, then they'll be this will be more flush with that. And I want the tile to be just a little bit proud, and it curves off on the edges. It drops down on the side, so it's a little higher here in the middle than it is on the edges. So if I take these down to seven eighths of an inch thick. Uh, that'll be almost a perfect size and I can use a piece of quarter inch Baltic birch for the back. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take these four pieces and we're going to make ourselves a arts and crafts frame in the Gustav Stickley style. I got a quarter inch chisel and the mortising attachment for my drill press. This isn't something I use very often but comes in handy every now and then like for these through mortises. Uh, the hole down doesn't go all the way down to touch the piece, so I got a little shim that I put in there. The mortise is uh, 5 sixteenths of an inch wide, so I also got a quarter inch or a sixteenth inch shim that I put behind the piece to shim it out so that I can get the 5 sixteenth inch uh, width. The mortise is three quarters of an inch long.
Now that the mortise is done, it's time to cut the tendons. I cut several test pieces just to make sure my setup was correct before I committed to my parts uh, for my frame. And I'm just using a 3 8 inch dado blade and an auxiliary fence to cut the cheeks. Um, the tendons are, the finished length is going to be an inch and an eighth. Uh, these are a little long. Uh, once I get the tendon cut, I'll trim them to the correct length. The only thing I changed here was the height of the dado blade. Uh, the fence and everything else is still in the same position. After a little fussing with the tenons, I got the frame to go together and the tile actually fits. To lay out the curve on the top piece, I used a 16th inch piece of stock. I think this is mahogany or something I had laying around. And the idea is just to curve it around here and I had a helper draw the line for me. And then I'm going to use this uh, oscillating sander here to just sand it down to the line. I wanted the ends of that piece to be one inch wide so they would match the size of the other frame pieces. After I trimmed the tendons to their final length, uh, it's time to go ahead and glue this piece together. I don't want to need a lot of glue because I don't want to deal with a lot of squeeze out. So. Uh, the idea was just to put on enough glue to get everything to glue together, but not overdo it. So that was what we're doing here. I did clamp it down to the table just to make sure everything uh, stayed nice and flat. Here's the frame out of the clamps. Uh, came out pretty nice. Everything's nice and flat. The joints are all fairly even. Needs some sand and I'll take some 120 sand uh, front and back uh, and then uh, before I put some finish on it I'll sand it up with 180. The true tenons came out just as I want, hoped that they would so that worked out pretty well. Uh, the only thing left to do really as far as woodworking on the frame is to wrap it out the back for a piece of plywood. Uh, I'm going to use some quarter inch Baltic burst and here's a piece now. So if I put that down in there, let's see, and then the test is how does our piece fit in there. So if we put that in there and drop our piece in, um, we pretty much got what we wanted, which is the top being a little larger than the, the top being a little proud of the frame and the corners being pretty much at the at the frame so I think that looks pretty good so we're going to go ahead now and sand up the pieces and wrap at the back and get this piece ready for finish. Before I wrap it out the back I want to peg the joints. I got the holes for the pegs laid out. Uh, I took them to the drill press and drilled them out with a 316 inch drill bit. 
Uh, unfortunately, I only had quarter inch cherry dowels, so I was going to go ahead and just make my own 3 16 inch bits, I, or dowels. I uh, got a piece of angle iron here. I drilled a 7 32nd inch hole, um, and then I drilled a 3 16 inch hole, and the idea is you just pound the dowel down through the uh, hole, and it peels it off till you get down to 3 16 so it worked pretty good. So once I got the dowels the right size and the holes drilled, I just went ahead and glued them in, trimmed them flush with a saw and was good to go. Now it's time to cut the rabbit. I'm just using a 3 8 inch uh, rabbiting bit. The height is set to the thickness of the Baltic birch plywood that I'm using. I want this frame to sit on a table, uh, so I'm drilling a quarter inch hole here in the back for a quarter inch dowel. I got the table set at a 20 degree angle. Uh, so the idea is to drill a hole deep enough for the dowel, but not so deep that it comes out through the bottom of the frame. So that's what I did here. Time to put some finish on this piece. I started by putting on two coats of a preconditioner. I get this from Charles Neal, who's a woodworker in Virginia, and I'll put a link to his uh, website down in the comments. Then I used uh, a combination of a couple of general finishes, dye, cinnamon, and a light brown. Two cinnamon, one light brown gives you a nice uh, aged cherry look. After that, I sprayed on a couple of coats of D-Wax shellac, and then finished it up with a uh, couple of coats of spray lacquer, the Minwax spray lacquer that I got at the box store. Well, use a die on any piece is a challenge sometimes. I sometimes think the smaller the piece is, the more challenging it is. So it's just a matter of putting the die on and wiping it off and making sure all parts get covered. Uh, you can tend to over dye some things sometimes so it's just a matter of fussing with it a little bit till you get a nice even looking coat. Well, the shellac goes on pretty easy. I did scuff sand uh, between coats of shellac uh, using some 320 grit sandpaper. I also scuff sanded uh, between or after the first coat of lacquer.
Well, after the first coat of lacquer, I like to go back and glaze a piece with the dye that I use. Just a matter of wiping on another coat of dye, letting it dry, and then spraying on a couple final coats of lacquer. Uh, the glaze, I think, gives it a little uh, added depth of color. Plus, if you sand through any areas, which I did in the one corner of this uh, piece, so it covers that up so you can hide a lot of mistakes by putting on a little glaze coat and dye. Time for final assembly. I got the back screwed on with um, uh, brass screws. I did paint around the edges of the um, plywood. Just I noticed that uh, the tile is a little irregular and you could see some of the white colored uh, Baltic birch showing through around the edges. So I just put a little bit of black paint on it there to keep that from showing through. So this is it. Yeah, go ahead and Put it in there with some silicone caulk and we're pieces done. <laughs>